Hey, I'm Ryan McLean and I'm boring. I'm about to tell you some boring facts about my life. You're going to be really excited to hear my boring facts because that is how I open my public speeches. I tell boring facts about myself that have nothing to do with you, nothing to do with your life, and nothing to do with what you want to get out of this. Okay, well, I'm not actually going to tell you boring facts about my life, but that's how most people start their speeches. Hi, my name is Ryan McLean, and I am 25, and I work online as an internet All right, people start their speeches in horrible ways, so boring. There's two things that you want to do when you start a speech. Okay, you want to establish with the audience what's in it for them. So you want them to, because they're sitting down, they're like, watching this guy... What am I going to get out of this? Should I listen to him? Oh, my iPhone's ringing. I've got some Instagram updates that I need to check. Why should I give my attention to you? So that's the first thing we need to establish is why someone should even bother listening to you. And let's face it, not many people establish this during their speeches. And number two is you need to establish some sort of credibility as to why you're talking about what you're talking about. Okay, so thinking of that framework, what is the best way? How should we start a speech when it comes to public speaking? So, there's four ways that I think are quite effective in starting a speech and there's some ways that are horrible. So let's start with the horrible ones. The most common one is people get up and say, Hi, my name's Ryan McLean and I work as an internet marketer and I have, I'm have i married with two kids and I live in blah, 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 blah. Okay, people give this you know boring life story of themselves. Not even a story, it's a factoid. It's like going on LinkedIn and saying, well, where did they work for the last five years? Yeah, that's interesting. I'm going to do that in my spare time. People don't like that and they don't engage with that. That is the most common way that people get it wrong. So here's the four ways that you can get it right. Number one, which is probably the fourth most effective one, is to start with a quote or with a proverb or with a Bible verse, whatever it is, and you can say, here's this great quote I found or blah blah says this and you lay out a quote and then you tie it in with your speech. So you're taking a quote from a reputable source that people may find interesting tying it in with your speech and you're saying, well, this is important to you because of this quote, because of this proverb. Number three, the third most effective thing is to ask a question. Now, this can be rhetorical or you can actually be asking the audience a question. Do you want to be a millionaire? That's probably a rhetorical question. But if you say, put your hands up if you like sausages. <laughs> ask a better question, something that's related to your speech, but you can ask questions, it does bring audience engagement. Number two, number two, the second most effective way of starting a speech is with a factoid or some shocking fact. You can say, did you know, did you know that the amount of energy that the earth receives in two minutes from the sun could power the entire earth for a year? How does that make you think? about energy and move, energy moving forward. So you're taking a factoid, you're taking something that might be a bit shocking and you're asking the audience to rethink something that they always thought was true. For me, when it comes to public speaking, I might say, did you know that when you're speaking, almost 50% of the audience is now on their iPhone or their mobile device? How does that change the way that you present? So you can grab those people's attention. Okay, so there's a big fact. Truthfully, I just made that up. But if that was a real fact, and then you're asking people to rethink, okay, well, I've never thought of that before. And then, mm, let me listen to you some more. Okay, so factoid. And number one, probably the most effective way to start a story is the same way as a parent, I put my kids to bed every single night. We read them a story. We tell stories. And how do stories start when you're a kid? once upon a time. Okay, so kids are trained that when we say once upon a time, they know that it's a story and they lean in and they want to learn more. But we're not going to start an adult speech to a group of adults and say, well, once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, we're going to use an adult way to start and establish a story. And that's simply by starting. When I was 25, in 1985, Two years ago, we give, we give a time frame, we say when this story happened. 
and then we go into our story. This and this happened, and but you need to be careful to tie it into them. See, the idea of a story and why stories work so well is that you're creating this open loop. So you're creating a story that people want to hear the end to. But you also need to get the audience involved with the story. They need buy-in. They need to see, they're in their own mind. They need to think, well, how does this story relate to me? So I've got more tips on storytelling in another podcast, and I'll probably do a video in the future on storytelling. Too much to cover in this one video, but stories are extremely effective ways to start your presentations. So I'm Ryan McLean. I'm from Public Speaking Power. If you want more videos, podcasts, and articles just like this one, then head over to publicspeakingpower.com. We've got a full archive of so many different videos. A new one comes every single day. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for watching this video. And just remember, next time you start your speech, don't start it with the boring statement of, Hi, my name is blah, blah, and I'm a blah, 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 blah.